G'day everyone, I'm Smokescreen and welcome back to another video. And off the wake of last video where we came across some particularly questionable antics around Nürburgring, Nordschleife and Group 4 for last week's Daily Race C, let's see how we go in this week's Daily Race C, which is probably, honestly, a worse combo in terms of trying to find a clean race without any shenanigans, but actually a combo that really, really rewards patience and driver skill. Where Oh, we're in the wet conditions. It's raining. Absolutely soaking rain. We're at Spa in Group 3 on the racing heavy wet tyres. And just check out this start as we go from about 12th up to 4th, I think. Uh, just off the line here, but unfortunately receive a bit of a nudge from behind. It just sends me a little bit deeper into Turn 1 than I would like. And then I get overtaken by an Audi. I think there's another couple of cars up the inside. Another Audi and a McLaren F1, if I'm identifying the car shape correctly. And upon reveal of the brake lights, I am indeed correct. So we are down to 7th, and it looks like they're going to try and go side by side through Rouge and Radion, which is not even good enough at the best of times. So and they get very awkward, and well, goodness me. <laughs> it just got so awkward there, I had nowhere to go. And unfortunately for that McLaren, he gets spun off into the barrier. So that is no good. We get back up into 5th. There's a couple of people mess up the top of Eau Rouge and Radion heading down the Kemmel Strait. We find ourselves in 5th with 1.5 second gap to the two up ahead who are also going to try and go side by side into the Com Chicane. It's an Audi and a Mazda RX Vision, I believe. Uh, they were, they're sort of going at it. Going a hammer and tong through the Com Chicane. And let's have a look here. The Audi's actually got... He was looking down the inside. I try to go for that gap. It's not really there. Audi runs into the back of the Mazda. And unfortunately, I then run into the back of the Audi, who then goes into the Mazda. And then I go into the both of them as they're both sliding on the corner. I get a kick oversteer for good measure as well. Down the inside of the Mazda, who gets a poor exit. And the Audi sent it very wide at the following uh, corner. Jackie X corner at turn nine and we're down the inside up onto the podium position in about nine or ten corners on the first lap yeah we think we I think I killed that McLaren a little bit but uh, unfortunately I wasn't really left with too which with anywhere to go to be completely honest and I that's just how slippery it is trying to get on the power on the exit of Puon and that's what we're contending with it takes about another lap until we catch up to armored uh, Su Suzeran the guy in second, the leader's there too, actually, I think it took two extra laps there. We're on lap three now, aren't we? So the Honda up ahead, uh, he streaked out, capitalising on all that carnage at the start of the race, just gets way too much uh, sort of weight transfer or maybe too greedy on the throttle and the car just goes around in the wet conditions. There's just no grip underneath you and that's up into second. It took us an extra lap now to catch up to Oz Quad Moto. This guy, goodness me, strap yourselves in, folks. Get ready for just more shenanigans because this guy is a very questionable character indeed. He gets oversteer on the exit of Puon there, which is very easy to do, and he actually comes in with a nice little move there around the outside in the braking zone, just capitalising on me going a little bit slow up the inside. Maybe, maybe I'm taking it too conservative. I don't want to run into the guy and don't want to cause any contact. We're looking down the outside as we head into turn 14. We're side by side right on the corner there. I give him room on the inside. He gives me space on the exit. He does squeeze me out to the curb a little bit, but that's nothing too untoward there. He did leave me a car with, so that's fine. It does mean he's narrow for the corner and gets a poor exit as we head up called Paul Frere, heading up towards Blanchemont, which is a very treacherous corner in these conditions. In fact, even this turn 16 here is treacherous in these conditions because the car can oversteer if you turn the wheel too much. But I was just on the outside there. I knew it wasn't going to end well for me, so I just backed out. And then Osquad Moto doesn't quite get the best of Blanchemonts there, but he immediately goes defensive. There's not too much I can do about this. So he's gone defensive under the chicane, closing out the lap. Here we go through the bus stop. We're going to look and try and get an undercut on the exit or a switchback is probably more what the... Uh, more the correct terminology there. It doesn't quite happen for me there. So as we head on to lap five, we're going to grab his slipstream, heading up towards turn one now. Let's have a go. He's very late on the brakes, actually. Apex is quite early and overshoots the corner. I managed to sort of undercut him on the exit or switch him back, sort of get back up the inside as he's recovering way on the outside. He obviously has to slow a lot more to get the car turned because he's made the corner a lot tighter. He's going to have superior straight line speed plus the slipstream. I have to be careful heading up the Kemmel straight now. And as we get over the top of Radion through turn three, we have a look behind. It is actually 
spun it out. <laughs> he's committed to the throttle. He's got a penalty. He's died on the on the top of Rouge Ratty on very easy to do, and uh, that's him out of the picture. That's us six and a half seconds in the lead, and by the end of the race, we come across the line with a faster slap and a time gap of about 30 seconds to Oz Quad Moto. So, yeah. Bit of, bit of choking under the pressure there. It was looking to be a good race though, and all the moments on the track were clean on that particular race there. We have a lovely, sensational victory. Now, this was the following race. Put a livery on the car. Thank you, Tez, for reposting it. A lovely Castrol Honda NSX. But here's the standing start this time. I'm pretty sure someone jumps the start by about 200 years. So they're going to be served with probably about a 10-second penalty. It's going to stop their car from going. I have to go up the middle as the BMW fails to launch as well. About three or four abreast up the inside. So I've got nowhere else but the outside to go. Heading up towards turn one. Midnight's deep heading into turn one now. And I just get caught in that awkward moment there. The Mercedes coming across to take the exit apex of turn one and just unghosts as I'm about to make contact. So that's a bit of a failed, uh, failed ghosting system there. Unghosting before about to make contact. How about that? Uh, but again, not really anyone's particular fault. It's just the turn one shenanigans. This Aston Martin goes really slow through a Rouge Radion, perhaps about 20 kilometres slower than you can ordinarily take it. Uh, you know, but again, probably just more first lap shenanigans. The car actually steps out on that slight right kink in the Kemble Straight there. And I'm out of line. I'm hung out to dry here, which is very difficult to do given how much water is spraying into my face. But we're at Le Com Chicane now, it just gets very awkward between myself and the Mercedes there. You know, was I up the inside far enough or did he turn across me a little bit? But nevertheless, I let him recover and he recovers straight into the path of this Aston Martin V12 Vantage there. And there's a little bit of side-to-side -side contact between them and I Moses manoeuvre down the inside. I'm still on the outside of the Aston Martin as we head down into... Oh my goodness, someone's been punted and Midnight's come in and there's a Porsche. And we've all been shoved off the track there. Not really sure who's at fault. There's some guy with a penalty there, but that's going to be for cutting a corner rather than contact. There's definitely a few cars off the road there. I'm getting the feeling that Midnight might have been a bit of a passenger there. I think Midnight received a punt from maybe the Porsche. And it sent everyone deep into the corner. Uh, but there's not too much I can do about that. It's all done and dusted. I don't know who's at fault for that. The penalty system's off. And I, I know in these conditions... There is an extremely high attrition rate, people dying left, right and centre, it's like the Black Plague. People dropping dead left, right and centre, so I know we've definitely got a chance to capitalise as I head straight up the inside of that VW Beetle Midnight again. Just a little bit slow on the entry there, so I just capitalised up the inside nice and cleanly, complete the move on the following turn as this Mercedes that I had contact with at Lacombe Chicane on this lap gets shuffled out by the Porsche driven by Matty up ahead. Slight overlap by the Mercedes looking down the inside at turn 14. Not quite got to work out on that particular occasion for him. The Porsche on the exit doesn't get the best of turn 15s there and we're going to try and grab the slipstream once the car gets settled down. Once the downforce takes over we're able to get a little bit more confidence in the car in making a manoeuvre down the straight and we've done that but we're heading up to the wrong part of the sort of the wrong part of the track to be catching up to the back of someone in these conditions. So unfortunately we run into the back of the Porsche who doesn't quite account for that little bit of extra speed there and goes a little bit wide onto Blanchemont, just gets a little unstable on the braking. Look at his rear end just fishtailing left and right and it's just enough for him to slide straight off the track and you actually get reset if you go deep and try and sort of cut across the second part of the chicane. You get reset to about like halfway through or right on that first apex there. So you definitely want to try and get back onto the track as soon as possible, even if it means almost doing a 180 degree loop as the yellow flag is out. This Ferrari 458 runs quite deep into turn one and much like we did on Oz Quad Moto on the previous race, we just get the cut back on the way out, the straighter exit, trying to get the better grip out on the exit of the corner, letting the tyres purchase into the road, letting them do, the, do their thing We're on the heavy wet tyres, so yeah, there's not as much grip by any stretch of the imagination compared to dry tyres on a dry surface, but compared to dry tyres on a wet surface, these heavy wet tyres have absolutely oodles more grip. So we just got to let them do their thing, let them grip up, let them cut through the surface of the water, and that's how we try and wheel this car around this track. But it took us till the end of lap two. We've caught up to the next couple of cars here as this Porsche gets slightly deep. That's the thing about running slightly deep in these conditions. In the dry, you can kind of recover it. Maybe you lose a couple of tenths. In these conditions, you can lose a second 
from just going too deep at turn one or going too deep at the chicane because there's just no grip to try and recover some time. It's so hard to get the power down and in fact the slower you are the more difficult it is to exit the corner because you've got so much more speed you have to try and put down uh, you know on the exit of the corner in the in the sort of traction zones which are a lot longer in these wet conditions here we get another cut back on the exit of turn one against this Porsche I expected him to kind of back out but he kind of didn't and he's just awkwardly there and I have to make sure I don't run him out of road and that's actually to be completely honest I think that was probably the best kind of racing we could have expected through a side-by-side -side moment at Eau Rouge and Radion. So fair play to both myself and the Porsche for making it through there without any contact, without any penalties, without anybody leaving the track. We just go slightly defensive into the upcoming chicane here just to make sure he doesn't try and resend it. But I think he's gone slightly deep. He has indeed as we look at the gap and it's opened up to about 1.1 seconds or in fact 1.2 at this particular stage. Now skip ahead to the La Source hairpin on the next lap. We catch up to the guy in second who just gets an oversteer moment but just about recovers it before actually crashing into the pit wall there. So fair play to Saw Toil. Driving that Ford GT, he actually recovered that car quite well given how far gone uh, the car actually was. So this is the state of play now. We've got 8.4 seconds to catch up to Osquad Boto. We get quite a decent Eau Rouge rating on, but we're just going to have to go head down, bum up, try and set some good laps, and that's exactly what we've done on lap 4, setting a 245.6, and that gap is down from about 8 seconds to 4.5 seconds. So we're just going to go through this lap now and just try and sort of keep the Honda nice and stable uh, in these wet conditions. So why are we choosing the Honda? Because normally or ordinarily, if you, especially recently actually, if you if you participated in the Red Bull Beat the Pro Challenge recently, it's Suzuka in this car on the racing hard tyres, obviously in the dry conditions. It was a very difficult car to handle. But then if you plop it in the wet conditions, I think it's one of the best handling cars in the wet conditions. There's just an absolute stark contrast to be made between this car in a wet track and this car in a dry track. So you can see we're three tenths up there. And we can just touch on quickly why this car is so good in the wet, or in fact why MR cars are so good in the wet in general. So what you're trying to do, especially in Group 3, is try and get the power down cleanly on the corner. An MR car, or indeed an RR car if they so existed in this category, they've got more weight over the rear axle. They've got more weight pushing the rear axle into the ground. So eventually, the weight of the back of the car and the downforce eventually overtakes and just sort of helps push the car into the road and you get traction up easier. If you're driving an FR car, all the weight's over the nose, so the rear wheels are kind of, they're, they're not as pushed down into the road, which means it takes a little bit longer. You gotta be more careful on the throttle because there's no weight trying to generate some, you know, traction from the weight of the car pushing the tire down into the ground. So that's why the Honda's so good. The weight transfer in the corners is not actually so much of an issue because you have to be so careful in the corners. You're not throwing the car around nearly as much as you do in the dry. So obviously in the dry, if you slam the wheel around in an MR car, the back end is going to lose grip and it's going to try and spin the car. You're going to lose a lot of tyre life by doing that. Uh, but then in the wet, you're turning in so gently, you're accelerating and braking so gently, changing direction so gently as we cross that sector split. We're 7 tenths up on a 45.6, we're on track for, the 40, for a 244.9. Uh, but yeah, you're definitely not pushing the car to the limit so much so that it keeps, uh, you know, disconnecting from the road. In the wet conditions, it's definitely more so about keeping it smooth. And if you're not smooth, you're not fast. And that's why it's quite easy to try and drive this Honda around the circuit. We catch right up to the back of Osquad Moto now. So unfortunately, that 244 has gone down the toilet because we've lost uh, lost a bit of time at Blanchemont there. He defends to the inside. That's a completely fair game. We switch him back there. We're going to try and switch him back on the exit here where it's more important. Try and get the power, power down here. But that McLaren F1 actually got a little bit of a better power application on this particular occasion and heading up into turn one once again he's going to go defensive he's gone quite defensive there he probably could have moved a little bit closer to the side of my car to open up his corner a little bit more and I try to get the same kind of switch back there I'm not quite able to get alongside fast enough and I'll just run into his sort of rear right quarter panel of his car and give him a little bit of a boost up towards Eau Rouge Radion so that's not gone too well for me. I actually take way too much speed into here and I'm really slow off the exit now. So the McLaren F1 with the superior straight line speed 
plus my large mistake at O'Rouge, uh, that's going to just mean that gap to him is going to stretch right out. You can see he's about seven and a half tenths ahead. We're just about out of slipstream range already, but thankfully the Kemmel straight comes to a close soon enough so that we don't completely lose touch with this McLaren. So we're still going to be just trying to focus on trying to put him out of position a little bit and try and get a move at one of these corners. And, you know, maybe he makes a mistake as he did there. He had to tap the brakes on the exit of the corner there. I'm going to look down at the inside to see if he makes a mistake. He's run so deep into the corner there. And I'm going to try and capitalise on this as he's deep. Just going to make sure we don't have any contact there. That's about as close as you want to get without having any contact. And that is us up into first position. But he wasn't having it. He just couldn't handle it. Absolutely could not handle being overtaken. And slams me into the barrier. So let's have another look at that. This is the replay here of what exactly happens. He just breaks too late, really. A bit of R4M action. R4M Oz Quad Moto is going to be the next uh, Ram for Money recruit. He's going to be the star driver on the roster. But let's have a look. Was it was it just? Was that just? Was he sort of getting justice for a little bit of an untoward moment, a little bit of a hip and shoulder from me? So this is the first time I've actually got even close to him. There was a little bit of contact at turn one, but that was absolutely nothing. So coming down into here, there's no contact here. Look how far away I am from him here. He just breaks way too late, opens up the inside. I head up the inside there, and there's no contact there. I would definitely argue until the cows come home that there's no contact between us there and he just sends it into the corner but what was interesting actually at the time when this happened because he spins out too obviously <laughs> at the time that this happened I was actually going to give him the benefit of the doubt I was probably you know I got hit into the barrier and I think I said something oh, like oh you're a bloody idiot mate or whatever but I was going to give him the benefit of the doubt and just go oh he spent the whole race in the lead maybe he's a little bit frustrated I gained about eight seconds in two laps and overtook him and he made a mistake for me to be able to overtake him and he just got frustrated and missed his breaking point. So I knew I could catch up again. There's a two and a half second gap and we've still got about a lap and a half to go or maybe a lap and, two third, uh, lap and one third to go until the end of the race. With only a two second gap, I'm quite confident I can close this gap and try and get past him. So coming into uh, the bus stop chicane, we're about, no, we're still like seven tenths behind him and he's already gone defensive. So the, all that's done there is compromised his line into the bus, bus stop chicane. So we're going to try and get a similar move to before, try and get a better power application than we do last time. A little bit of a movement left, and he's just turning into me and putting oh, me shit. into the wall. And that was it. Uh, that is, that's the start of the, that's the start of the war. I'm not having this. Tell Megatron, let's tangle. Let's tango indeed. So I wasn't having any of that. Um, yeah, I've done nothing to him and he's just ran me off the track twice. The fact that he put me in the pit wall then, that kind of told me that the incident, at the, the previous incident probably wasn't an accident either. A little bit, uh, little bit of a coincidence that he's accidentally quote unquote crashed into me and then purposely put me in the barrier. So I'm not having that. And this guy, unfortunately, I don't get like this too much, but I think I'm gonna have to do my team a bit of justice here. Ram for money. The, the bank account was looking a little bit sort of lean at this particular stage too, so I could do with a little bit of a, uh, a payment there. I get close to him here, but it's not quite enough to try and sort of get him at a, the correct part of the track. What I wanted to make sure is that he doesn't sort of do the same back to me, so I want to do it quite late in the lap. And yes, uh, that is confirmation. I am going to sort of deal with this guy. A little bit of hip and shoulder is all that's needed just to get him out of the way, you know, because... I really don't want him to have this win here. He doesn't deserve it. He thinks I've run him off or done something, but ultimately what's happened there is I've caught up to him, overtaken him. He couldn't handle it and had to ram me off to try and keep the lead, uh, which is not very clean at all. So coming into uh, the final bus stop chicane here, he goes really slow, moves over to the left. I'm not having any of that as we head into the braking zone right now. Oh, yes. Oh, yes! Ka-ching. Off you go, mate. And the, what's going to happen there is we know he's going to get reset there, and he actually indeed does. And let's have another look, because this, in the words of Tez, absolute art. 
So I'll just give him a little bit of a nudge there, you know, yep, that's absolutely filthy by me, but uh, I think given what he'd actually done to instigate that, he ended up getting reset too, so I, I was, I, I knew that would happen, that was in the back of my head, I was like, oh, if I bump him at the chicane, he'll get reset and I'll, I'm guaranteed to have, have the win there, but oh my goodness, this guy, man, and it's not over, it's not over, I do win the race, he gets reset, I win the race, and... You know, I probably deserved that, to be honest. You know, minus the hip and shoulder, I think, given the fact that I caught up to him, overtaken him. You know, I, I think I drove well enough to deserve the win, but he just couldn't handle it. He, he wasn't having any of it. So, this is what the uh, this is what the lobby looked like after. Suki cheating loser, I get called. And then I, I was like, <laughs> that's actual footage of me typing. I said, why well, ram me off twice? And just gave him a piece of my mind. He couldn't handle being overtaken and had to ram me off because he didn't have the skill to get me back. So he's just done that. And let's remind you, there's no contact there. So none in the braking zone. He runs deep. And this is where the contact may have occurred if it was going to. I really don't think there was. His car moved left, but I think he turned out of it. So I'm like, nope, check the replay because 100%. And then I, I drop this ball on him. He reckons I pushed into the corner and then he calls me intelligent so thanks very much yeah uh, I was called that a lot in school and I'm just like there wasn't contact check the replay lobby closes and that was it. So yes quite questionable driving from Oz Quad Moto and we're actually not done with him I'll come back to that in a minute but I actually caught this little moment in the replay as well this was after I crossed the line to finish the race here uh, this not FW88 guy gets spun out by Midnight on the exit of the corner and Midnight actually stops and waits for him. The reason I put this in the video is just to show you it's not all it's it's not all clean driving down the drain. I did find this nice little friendly moment in the replay. So yeah, Midnight's made an honest error there, spun the guy out and just waited for him at the line. It's nice to see. So shout out to Midnight uh, for, for doing that for that Volkswagen, the fellow Volkswagen driver. But I said I wasn't done with Oz Quad Moto. I know I'm not quite done. This is another replay. This is a replay that somebody sent me or told me to go and look at because I'm not even in this race. I'm nowhere to be seen. I, I, I turned off the game and I'm, I'm done. But then I got sent this. Oz Quad Moto. He's back in his McLaren F1. He's back on his questionable antics. But we'll see exactly uh, what leads up to his uh, sort of more dirty driving, in fact. So he gets past the Porsche cleanly there. I know he can do it now. He's gone and proved to everyone that he can overtake cleanly when he needs to. And that Porsche is sort of the perfect example of that. He did nothing wrong to the Porsche. The Porsche did nothing wrong to him. He got past. And this is where this is where it gets very questionable. The Woken Beast catches up to him from down the back of the field. A couple of flashes of the headlights just to put him off. And he actually makes a mistake. Gets a bit of oversteer off poo on there. Very easy to do. I did it a couple of times even. But then by the time we get through the fug and he's caught right back up again so he's going to try and get a switch back as we head through turn 14 he's not quite going to be able to get the overlap coming into the next corner there Osquad Moto sweeps around the outside takes the apex and the exit uh, but Woken Beast gets a much better exit here and instead of letting him past Osquad Moto just turns right and pushes him into the grass but what it actually does is nothing more than spin himself out so have a look at this again this is like, what is going on with this bloke there's been no untoward behaviour from Woken Beast here towards Ozquad Moto. He just get it just seems to me that this Moto guy gets really salty when someone's faster than him and catches up to him and overtakes him. Which I think is racing, isn't it? If I'm not mistaken. So he does nothing more but spin himself out. I think Woken Beast actually continues on. Yeah, we see there. So he's done nothing more than make himself look like an absolute clown even more. And it's not done. It's actually not done. Because the Porsche catches back up to him. He doesn't go for the move at Blanchemont probably quite sensibly. As he gets a half second penalty. I'm not quite sure what that was. He runs off the exit of the track on Blanchemont here and just gets way too much weight transfer on the brakes and a little bit of an awkward contact there. That penalty goes up to a second for running wide out of Blanchemont. He gets reset as he did in the last race, overtaken by another Porsche and he quits the race. He just quits the race. He's done and dusted. What? I just don't understand it. Hey, what is going on? I just don't understand what's going on recently on these daily races here. It's unfathomable. We saw this questionable behaviour at Nürburgring, and now we're seeing it again at Spa in the wet, and I was having a beautiful race. You know, fighting through the back, you know, making the most of the shenanigans. I had a little bit of coming together with the McLaren at the start of the first race, but again, 
where did I have to go? I didn't have anywhere to go. But other than that moment, I feel as though it was a lovely race. You know, it takes a lot of, lot of skill, a lot of concentration to try and get around the spa in the wet. And then you just have these rammers, unfortunately, that just want to ruin the fun for everyone. You know, and I'm not really the type of person that wants to make these videos, but unfortunately when I have a guy say, oh yeah, you ran me off, but I didn't, and then he punts me off twice because I ran him off, but I didn't, I'm going to make the video, aren't I? I think it's pretty entertaining to see how these people sort of conduct themselves, see their sort pattern, because it's just irrational, and it just is so confusing as someone that wants to play a game, turn on a race again, race online and have a good hardcore, hard fought clean race with another driver. There's nothing more satisfying than that and I get zero satisfaction out of just punting people for no reason. Unfortunately that guy deserved it and you know, so I kind of did everyone a little bit of community service there and hopefully I've dispatched of him, done what I needed to. But at the end of the day, what's most important is that I hope you enjoyed this video. So do hit the like button if you did, and do subscribe if you'd like to see more videos and streams from me. Do leave a comment as well. Questions, comments, and constructive criticism, as always, very much appreciated. But that's going to be the end of this one today, and that means that is it from me. So once again, I do thank you very much for watching. See you later.